Myrna Jochum. I'm the volunteer coordinator of Mayview State's Hospital Volunteer Resource Services. We're glad to be here this morning to introduce our service to you. Thought maybe you ought to know that volunteering has been at the heart of those entering our country, be it with the Mayflower or past Ellis Island for all these years. Volunteering is really an English word. There is no word in other languages. It takes two, three words to explain what volunteering is in English. The volunteer sector here in, in the mental hospital field is something that came about fully 100 years after they were, mental hospitals were established in the Commonwealth. The first mental hospital was Harrisburg, in, established in, 19, uh, in 1840. And the first volunteer program was started in uh, 1954, the organized volunteer program. That does not mean that people didn't volunteer at mental hospitals, those who were not afraid. The reason it took so long was because there is this fear of mental illness or mental retardation, even the fear of people who are spastic, who, who suffer from palsy of some sort. And in 1953, it was finally established. How Mayview was established in 1893 as Marshall C., given that name after a prison in England. It was an almshouse. It was for those people, particularly those coming from countries who never studied the language, didn't know English, lost maybe one partner, a father. Mothers and children came to Mayview. And in 1890, uh, in, in 1912, it became the city home and hospital of Pittsburgh. Again, a TB sanitarium and a uh, almshouse. In 1941, however, the volunteer, uh, the Commonwealth took over the hospital and became a mental hospital. The patients, the people that were then at Mayview became Mayview's patients as well as those they accepted that were, had, ment uh, had psychosis of some sort. So that is why the population was so large. It was 4,000 people at that time. When I came to Mayview in 1972, there were 2,200. And at this point, with many of the patients leaving the hospital because they should never have been there in the first place, we have about 800 patients. It might be interesting to note that the victims of the 1918 uh, influenza epidemic in Pittsburgh were brought to Mayview to die. Many of our graves are of these victims. The big change came about in the exodus from the hospital in the 1950s when medicines were introduced to help these patients. When medicines like you would take for high blood pressure or diabetes were given patients and they could maintain themselves. Now we are down to those people who are really psychotic and who have no el nowhere else to go. And our need, of course, for, pay, for volunteers to help with these is very, very important. I'd like to introduce my assistant to you, Tim Stevens, and he'll tell you a little bit about what we do as a volunteer department. What we do at Mayview with our volunteers varies greatly. We have some individuals who come in once a week, or every, every couple weeks, and they work with a specific patient or a specific few patients. We call that a a one-to-one -one volunteer experience where they work with assigned volunteers. We also have volunteer groups that come in, be it once a month or every two weeks, and what they do is go to a specific area of the hospital, work with the same group of patients every month or every two weeks. That way there is a friendship formed between the volunteers and with the patients. And some of our volunteer groups have come here for many, many years, some over 20 years, to Mayview State Hospital, which we think is just a uh, fantastic achievement. We have individual volunteers who've been here for 15, 10, 15, 20. We have one volunteer who's been here 31 years, which is, I think, just phenomenal. Um, we have a summer volunteer program that we're in the midst of now, where we've had about 25 young people from the community come into the hospital. We think that's kind of a, an achievement into itself, and that the community feels comfortable enough about Mayview State Hospital that they allow their teenagers and their young adults to be with us. And we're very appreciative of that and appreciative of the young people who work throughout our hospital in almost every area and in many of our, our departments, our wood shops, our deaf center, 
our geriatric areas, our mentally retarded area called the Southwest Debilitation Center, just throughout our hospital. We also have a Trifles and Treasure Shop, which is led by Vivian Lesnan, who, who's with us today. And they are open on Tuesdays and Thursdays from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. And this allows an opportunity for our patients to come over to our new volunteer center, which opened March 8th, a year and a half ago. Uh, it allows our staff to come into the volunteer center, to, volunteer center to pick up an item. And of course, you, the community, are invited to come in on Tuesdays and Thursdays to purchase some of these items, some of which are made by our, our not our volunteers, but by our patients. And some of our volunteers who work actively with Trifles and Treasure Shop go out when they're on vacation and pick up items that uh, would be nice for our gift shop. We also have a clothing mart called the New You Clothing Boutique, which is open on Mondays and Wednesdays from about 9 in the morning till 3 in the afternoon. And this is a great service for our patients in that we don't, or we no longer have what we call state clothing that is pushed upon patients. The patients are encouraged to wear normal clothing that would be worn outside of our hospital. And our community friends, our volunteer friends, and folks just out there in the community who really don't volunteer, but they come in periodically and bring us bags of good used clothing. And this is put to use through the women and men who work in our clothing boutique, and our patients get an opportunity to select something along with the help of our volunteers that they can wear that makes them look a little more human, a little more normal, and they're, they're happy about this. So these are just some of the things that we do. We have volunteers that work in every area of the hospital. There's no area of the hospital that is hidden. Uh, we have volunteers in our admissions area, in our, our mentally retarded area, in our various geriatric facilities, in our extended care areas, even in our forensic area, which is our criminal commitment area that houses 56 men and up to 15 women. And I must say, we even have women who have volunteered in the forensic center. So it's not an area where people really have to be concerned. So we've had a, a great record in our 33-year history, and we expect that great history to continue into the future. We have something we'd like to share with you about our orientation programs at Mayview, which we've been very proud of. It's an opportunity to bring in the community to the hospital, to see our hospital, to tour our hospital, and to hear from many of our staff members which gives you a pretty good idea about how our hospital functions today. We have four orientation programs every year. We have one in September, in the fall, for the daytime volunteers. We also have, or evening people who can come during the day. We also have an evening orientation which permits an opportunity for people who work at night who may not be able to be with us during the day orientation to, to still have an orientation. We have one in the spring and also in the summer, which we just recently completed with about 25 young people. So these are opportunities for you in the community to hear about our volunteer program and to decide if you would, as an individual or as part of a church group or civic group, would like to volunteer with Mayview State Hospital. And we also encourage you, even if you're really basically hesitant about volunteering, if you're just curious about Mayview State Hospital, this is an opportunity to deal with that curiosity, come in and see what we have to offer, and maybe you too will wish to volunteer with our volunteer department. Thanks a lot, Tim. I thought we should mention our Mayview group. Our Mayview group has been with us 51 years. They came before we had an organized program because a member of their church was a patient, and they've come every month. They used to come every week, but now that they're down to three or four people, they come at least every month and serve the one hospital unit south too. I think that's something to mention. I, our hospital has a volunteer resource board. And these people are the, the, um, the backbone behind the volunteer program. They are also our advisory committee. And today we brought three members of the executive committee of the volunteer board along. Vivian Lesnett is the president. She was just elected and she will serve for two years unless re-elected. And so she'll tell you a little bit about her, how her beginning as a volunteer here at Mayview. Vivian? Uh, my beginning as a volunteer started way back, um, well it started way back in 1946 I think when I was a student nurse. I really wasn't volunteering then but I was a student nurse at Mayview from Uniontown, Uniontown Hospital. 
Um, of course, I had never been in a mental hospital before and was very young, around 20 years old at that time. And I really uh, got to learn to love to work around the patients. And it, uh, mental illness became uh, something that was uh, very close to my heart. And I really enjoyed my three month stay there, thinking each time as I saw a patient there, but for the grace of God, go I. <clears throat> um, after I left there as a student, then I uh, was married the next uh, two years to a man from Bridgeville. So my home has been up here uh, near Mayview State Hospital. So I worked for a while as a nurse in the community. And then uh, several years ago, I retired and started to volunteer at Mayview. Uh, in the meantime, I would come up now and then and have a one-to-one -one, uh, volunteer relationship with the patients when I was working. But after I uh, stopped working, uh, then I really wanted to volunteer in earnest. And uh, I can't really imagine life without volunteering at Mayview right now. You know, it's really an en enriching experience. Um, I have done many things in the volunteer line, such as um, uh, helping the chaplaincy department as pianist. I play the piano a little. Uh, not well, but uh, we are in very much need of pianists for Sunday services. So if any, any of you there in the viewing audience can play hymns, uh, we would very much like to have you because they have many su uh, Sunday services and we are down to two pianists. So a lot of services do not have anyone. Um, so I'd like for you to think about that. And I also have worked in a party group. We have had a group from our church several years ago that worked for about five years, I guess, coming up once a month having a party for the patients on closed wards. These are patients that never got out any other time. And it was a very rewarding experience for we volunteers to give this party once a month. We had a lot of fun. And I think we got more out of it than the patients, although the patients seemed to enjoy it too. You know, we, had, we usually would have music and different things, and we would see patients that uh, never did anything else tapping their foot and uh, maybe getting up and dancing a little bit. So there, we are always much in the need of party groups, which usually come once a month or twice a month to Mayview in the different wards. Um, then, um, I have helped uh, at Christmas time. We always need uh, patients to wrap gifts and uh, buy gifts for the patients. They always give uh, each patient a uh, large gift. And uh, so that's something the volunteers can do also. But there are many, many things that, that time doesn't permit me mentioning it. But I would just like to say that any of you out there uh, watching that might feel the least little bit of desire to volunteer at Mayview, it's certainly worth looking into, and it will enrich your life. Thank you. Thank you very much, Vivian. I think it, the audience should know that we wrap over 4,000 gifts at Christmas time, that the community helps us get larger gifts for those patients who have no families and no funds, and that every patient, whether they have a family or not and funds, gets at least two or three little gifts so all in all, we have, a, we have a need for people who would like to wrap and then, of course, to give us gifts. At Christmas time, we give only things that are new. I think that's something to remember. Now I'd like you to meet Harold Hartung, who is our treasurer and financial secretary. He helps us keep our funds in order. Harold? I came into Mayview basically by the back door, I suppose. Mm -hmm. My wife had volunteered at the hospital over many years, starting with a garden center group a long, long time ago. And as I uh, brought her down to various functions, I would stay and help with the carnival and different functions where it wasn't necessary to be here all the time. When I retired, I found that I needed something to be more meaningful in my life, and I began to come down to Mayview in earnest. Worked in the, pub, the patient's library for a period of time, and then was elected to the treasurer's job. The treasurer's job takes care of the finances that are contributed to the volunteer group. 
from the community, basically. And we keep a very, very close rein on how this money is handled, all of it. Eventually it goes back to the patients because it means that uh, they can have things that the state can't afford to give them. We think this is a very worthwhile thing and as Vivian said, patients or some of our people go out and buy gifts. These gifts are paid for out of the volunteer funds and we feel that this is a big gift to the patients, a big lift to them, because some of them have nobody to visit them over these holidays. I think that basically takes care of, of my part of the job because treasurers, all they do is mind the money and hope they don't do anything wrong. <laughs> right. I think you should know that we're a nonprofit organization. Our money is in the hands of the volunteers and not in the hands of the state. As, as state employees, Tim and I cannot solicit any funds, but may I say that we gratefully accept anything that anybody wants to give us. I'd like to introduce now our secretary of the, the executive committee, Lois Ruck. Lois? Well, I've been there relatively a short time. Uh, the two years ago, November, my church group asked me to fill in. They were going to put on a play at RIT One West. So I thought it was just going to be a one-time thing. And after that, I went the following month, and then I went to orientation, and then I got hooked. <laughs> and I started out in the patient library, and from there I went over to the volunteer center itself as a receptionist. And I'm there twice a week now, Tuesdays and Thursdays, helping in the office, doing filing, also helping in the T&T shop, wherever they need me. And uh, I really enjoy it. I look forward to, to getting up and going out there. I love the patients that come over. We have a good time. They're very loving. Uh, if we didn't have all these wonderful volunteers and this support, the volunteer program at Mayview could not at all be successful. It's this love that our volunteers exhibit for our patients and the patients for our volunteers. And if we in our own volunteer center didn't have the help of people like, like Vivian and Lois and Harold, we'd get nowhere at all. And we're grateful to them for that. This is the Mary T. Summers Volunteer Center. It was built in 1929 by the mayor of Pittsburgh for the city home and hospital at Mayview. It was at that time not a mental hospital. When it became Mayview State Hospital, this building was then the superintendent's house. And it was lived in by Drs. Thomas and Dr. Downey. Many people would remember Dr. Trivis. After Dr. Trivis left in 1979, this building then became, was no, of no use and they used it for, for storage and things like that. In 1983, it was decided that the volunteer center should be opened here. And indeed in 1985, the volunteer center became a reality. The furniture here was given to this center for maintenance from Dixmont State Hospital because Dixmont was closed in 1890, in 1984. And many of the things in here are Dixmont's, most of them as a matter of fact. Some of the things in the hospital how, uh, here in our center, however, were given us by volunteers. For instance, the red settee, the piano, and many of the lamps are all donations from volunteers. It took the volunteer department with the help of the administration and maintenance, 10 months to get the volunteer center to be what it is today, a place for patients, staff, and community to meet. People are invited to have their meetings here whenever they would like, if they'll just let us know. This is the master bedroom of the superintendent's house and is now the office of the director of the volunteer services. We will see 
same sort of furniture in here that was received from Dixmont. Some of the finest pieces, however, that were still Mayviews is this corner piece, this hutch over here. Okay. This room is used not only for the office, but also for meetings of a smaller nature where maybe 14 or 15 people can be seated. We are now looking at the dressing room, which is our ante room and which is used for records. The chair over there in the corner with our mascot, that's Pierre, uh, is, was built before 1776 and is a riding chair or with a riding arm or also a sewing chair. Mayview has an ongoing prog program of recruiting volunteers and at this time summer volunteers are being recruited. The assistant volunteer coordinator, Tim Stevens, as you see, is doing just that now. Okay, I'm Evelyn Kapiris, the secretary here at the Volunteer Resource Services. And as you can see, our little motto says, the Lord provideth, and he certainly does because he always brings us whatever we need. We had an art show recently and one of our patients made this mobile unit that you see here and the patient allowed us to buy it so that we can adorn our little reception hall up here. We love to have all of our volunteers come because they're beautiful people and they always donate to us and they always provide for our patients. We'd love to have you come and see our volunteer center whenever you have an opportunity. The bits of furniture which could not be used throughout the house for m purposes of offices were, were brought up here because indeed these are the history of Mayview and Dixmont. Most of the pieces in here are from Dixmont with the exception of three or four. I thought you should see this little chair here which was the dentist chair. Imagine how small you would have to be to sit in it. Let's take a look at the doctor's examination table how short that is. And over here we have the optometrist and all his equipment. Over here we see what is the forerunner of our psychiatric chairs. A wooden chair. This is one of Mayview's pieces. Behind us and over here you will see the first types of dishes used by our patients when the hospital first became a mental hospital. You will notice that they are metal. Over here, Mayview, being self-sufficient throughout and was at the time, also had a mine, a coal mine. And this is the last whistle for Mayview's coal mine. The last hand-driven air raid siren for Mayview is over here. And this is the oldest of its kind, a nozzle for our fire department. This instrument here is a saw. They didn't have to use exercycles, if you'll see. The saw would come on top and our patients learned how to deal with wood so that when they went back into the community they could get jobs. Over here we have a tablecloth which was embroidered by a patient at Dixmont. We have a few, quite a few of these. The, the little doily under the metal dishes over there was done by this same lady. Exquisite work. Oh, Mary Farley. We thank you again for this uh, gathering. For those who uh, put so much into it, we give you special thanks. Bless this little tete a tete, this meal, and us. And the program we were working for will be highly successful. Amen. 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 Thank you very much. Uh -huh. Do you want to explain something? All right. Um.
This is our Mayview Drama Group. We're, we're rather small today because a lot of our folks are at camp, are away visiting outside. And um, our group has been in existence for 14 years now. And our little, um, and we're smaller than we've ever been, but we're also a very fine group. Uh, we have um, four of us today. For the last 13, 14 years, we have been meeting together. Now, not all the folks have been with us that long. Different ones have, have left the hospital They've, with our group, and then we're, other people come and join us. And this is our group now. Uh, we uh, are going, starting regularly to go up to where the el elderly people are, and we're going up to sing and entertain for them. And next week, we're going up and have uh, put on a little Fourth of July show. We usually meet together around the table in the kitchen, and part of drama, of course, is, is um, talking, isn't it? That's part of communication, is drama. So we talk about things that have happened to us. Now, I think some of us went to camp this week. <laughs> America, my home, sweet home. God bless America, my home, sweet home. This is uh, Vivian Lesnett. Um, I'm standing here in, the, in our Trifles and Treasures gift shop, which is located in Mayview State Hospital. Uh, we opened the doors to our gift shop uh, last year, March of 1985. We've just been operating a little over a year. We started this, uh, the volunteers started this, in the volunteer house here as a um, thought that we wanted to have the patients especially and the public, uh, the people from Bridge Bridgeville in the community and the staff here at Mayview come together in this gift shop and have a place to shop, have a place to get together, to know each other, have a chance for the patients to get to learn how to shop and also to um, have the public at large get to know a little bit more about a mental hospital so that they wouldn't be so afraid uh, to even come up here. So we've had a lot of fun, the volunteers here that have uh, been working in this for the last year. Um, the patients make a lot of our things. In fact, we have some things here to show you right now that the patients have made. Um, this is Betty Woodward, uh, the co-chairman of the gift shop, Betty Woodward. Um, and she's going to pick up a few of these things on our table and show you what uh, the patients have made, first of all. This pink pitcher uh, the patients have made in our habilitation center, which is a ceramic shop where the patients make things and bring them over for sale. The prices are really right. They're a lot less than what you would pay in the store. Another beautiful item that we have here is a little cabbage dish. The top comes off and it sits on a little platter and it looks just like a head of cabbage. Now the patients make that too. Um, most of these items are for sale in stores for twenty dollars or so. This this little item here is five dollars. Our pitcher I think is what Betty? Five or six dollars? Eight dollars. And um, the patients made the little small cabbage dish. They also made the um, the little dogs and the little cats and also this little piggy bank. You want to hold that up, Betty? Not a little piggy bank. It's a big piggy bank. And it's only 625 <laughs> And it's only 625 Also made by the patients at Mayview. 
We also have different wood items that the patients make, which are really, really lovely. This one is a little um, cradle with a little baby doll in it. They made the, the wooden cradle. Also is a magazine rack sitting right beside it, made by the patients in the wood shop at Mayview. Also, there's a little truck, a little wooden truck that uh, Erna has there in her hands. That was made by our patients in the wood shop, I believe. Also, we have a bird feeder and a little stool. But first of all, the bird feeder made by our patients in the wood shop. It's only $10. And it's only $10. And it's just a beautiful bird feeder for those of you who love birds. Also, we have a little uh, turtle stool. $5. $5. We also have um, uh, shoe racks. Uh, we also have shoe racks that the patients made, make out of wood, and we have little uh, ivy uh, wishing wells to put ivy plants in that they make, and we have these on sale here all the time. This is our patients' table over here. Uh, we have a card table, and we have things set up on it for the patients to browse through. These are inexpensive things like cosmetics. Um, little um, wallets and all kinds of little things uh, that the patients like. Rings, bedroom slippers, all kinds of things that they can put on their stands. And they're only, they only sell for a nickel or dime. If the patients don't have any money at all, and we're told the ones that don't have money, then we give them to them. But if they have some money, why we only sell them for a nickel or dime. Okay, over here we have our jewelry rack, one of our biggest jewelry racks in the, in the shop. And um, this uh, includes donations from people that have donated their jewelry that they no longer want. And we have a lot of necklaces and pins and rings and what have you in the jewelry line. This is uh, the patients really love jewelry. And uh, this is all sold for a quarter each. Uh, they spend many, many minutes going through jewelry, as do some of the staff and the public, too. That They like jewelry also. Then these clowns that you see, uh, they're made by community friends, talented community friends that bring them up to us, and we sell those. We oh. have, also, we have um, uh, little sweaters. Uh, Betty's holding up a sweater over here made by a, a community friend that uh, knits and crochets. And then we have a lot of ceramic things made by Betty's uh, children. She has a son. Dolls. Those are little porcelain dolls, aren't they, Betty? Mm -hmm. uh, Cupid dolls, they're called. OK, now we're in our storage room where we keep all of our uh, things that we don't put out for sale. Uh, we, as you can see, we need more room in here, <laughs> but we don't have it. But anyway, this is where we keep all of our things when we're not using them. We have to uh, bring them out of here and put them back each night. We're open Tuesdays and Thursdays uh, every week from 10 to 4.30 at the Mayview Volunteer House. And we'd, we really like to have some new customers. But uh, I'd like to introduce to you here in the storage room, working hard, is Diane Jones. She's uh, getting our cards ready for our new card rack that we uh, had donated just yesterday. She's getting greeting cards ready to put in that. Um, to her left is Nancy Bizzato and Betty Odie. And these girls are inventorying our things. Everything that we sell has to be inventoried. And these are our two inventory girls who do all the inventorying for our shop. Um, this takes uh, many hours of work, and we are really glad to have them here in our shop. Okay, now we're going to have the drawing of our afghan. It's a beautiful thing with orange and brown and light beige, and this was made by one of our community friends several months ago, and we've sold tickets on it for several months now. And uh, we uh, think we have about 100 tickets in there, and several people have several tickets, so a lot of people are expecting to win. But we are going to ask Chris Henry, one of our newest, youngest volunteers, to draw um, the winning ticket. And uh, Betty Odie's holding the bag. So shake them, shake them up real good. Okay, Chris. 
You want to say who the winning ticket is? Oh. <laughs> Gee, I lost my glasses. What is that? S. Kirkler? I don't I can't make that out at all. <laughs> you have your glasses, Erna. <laughs> <laughs> Steve Kugler. Oh, oh, Steve Kugler. Steve Kugler. And, and who is Steve Kugler? He's one of our staff people on Temple Center 2. Oh, okay. Steve Kugler is one of our staff people who works on Temple 2. So we'll call him just as soon as this is over and tell him that he's the big winner. <laughs> My name is Bruna Graciano. I was a former employee here for 35 years. My assistant, Josephine Bedner, also is a former employee of 25 years. And we donate our time by doing many, many different things. Erna calls us the lower level because we're usually down in the basement, but I don't like that. Uh, these are magazines. We get magazines from different groups of people and we bag them. We try to sort them out to give the right kind of magazines for the right buildings. And um, we, so hardback, softbacks, any kind of a book is greatly appreciated by the patients here. This is the lower level, as Erna calls. And we have here some of the few things, many, many things, not few things, that we get. For instance, we get portable TVs, all kinds of TVs. The hospital buys TVs, don't misunderstand. But sometimes patients like to have their own TV, so we give it to them. And uh, if we don't, at the end of every two years, we have a garage sale, and if we don't, haven't utilized it by then, then we sell it and put it in the garage sale. We have here some crafts. These are crafts. Oftentimes people start crafts and never finish them. They send them to us. We sort them out. We give them to the patients to work on, which they love. These are little pillows that are made by volunteers. Uh, these are Christmas items. Now, we use some of these to decorate the wards, but also, as I said before, What's left over? We have a garage sale. Um, coffee pot, electric coffee pot, toaster. Uh, we also, there are requests for different parties on wards. Different wards have kitchen units. They call and request us, and we have it, and we send it to them. Um, curlers, makeup, cosmetics of all type. Uh, half a bottle, you don't like it, it's not your favorite, send it to us. We use it. Games, uh, puzzles, cards. Um, here's some more th games. We use those. Jewelry. Big item. Big, big item. We take them, we tag them, we fix them on cards, and we give them to the patients for bingos, for little parties, when they have little parties for prizes. If we get too much, which we don't very often get, then we sell it at the garage sale. Anything that we get that cannot be utilized, first, we utilize it here at the hospital when we have a lot of use for it. What we can't use a lot, utilize, then we save when we have our garage sale. We have, okay, in this room, this area here is also used at Christmas time. Edna Schnabel, one of our loyal, loyal volunteers, is in charge of the Christmas. We have, at the end of Christmas, we have 4,000 gifts that we give out to each patient. So we have patients who request special gifts, we get them for them. They're donated by people in the community again. And then we give each patient two little gifts at Christmas time. And this is what where all the wrapping's done in these four four rooms. I'd like to introduce you to Mayview's Clothing Mart, which is run by the Volunteer Resource Services. This clothing mart is for patients throughout the hospital. I'd like to introduce one chairperson, one of its three chairpersons, Gladys Palmer. Thank you, Erna. As you can see, this is the receiving area for the clothing brought in by the public. At this place, the clothes are removed from the bags. They're sized, sorted, and tagged with the correct size so that uh, and they're hung. And then they will know, we will know where the clothing is. When a patient comes in and we're looking for a particular size, we will know where to go to hunt for the clothing. 
at this place, if the clothing needs mended or washed or ironed, it is put in the proper place there for this to be done. Anything that we cannot use here, such as children's clothing, is packed for SHIM and any other charitable organization that can use some things. If they will uh, contact us, then we will save clothes that's not used for patients at Mayview uh, for this organization. I'm Margie Hartung, one of the volunteers, and I just wanted to show you some of the things we do for the patients. This is our washroom, which sometimes we do seven loads of laundry a day. Anything that needs um, washed, we wash. Uh, this is a men's dressing room, and here we have mirrors so that they can view themselves. And the other room is the ladies' dressing room, a storage room, and also these are some more volunteers. I'm Mildred Smith. Mildred Smith. Oh, sorry. Yes, and Dorothy McGough. Dorothy McGough. And we just wanted to show you something. We have sales twice a year, and all these um, clothes are bought new. These are some of the sizes. That's it, Dorothy. Come out. These are some of the sizes we need. We buy bras, panties, um, outdoor jackets, sweaters, anything that the patients need, we buy new. Mildred, would you sh yeah. show some of those shirts and the sizes that are in them? So everyone knows what we're doing. It's a 19-3. 19-3. And these are some of the sizes that we go out and buy. The clothing over there is stored for winter. The coats are all covered. The uh, bins back there have the sweaters and things in there. Some more winter coats over there. And we do need lots of men's um, dungarees. They love them, and especially the name brands. Right now, we have men ready to go fishing. So if anybody has any nice straw hats at home, with, especially the ones with the big brims, we would appreciate it. Another thing that the patients do like are wallets, men's and women's. They enjoy them. Also, sunglasses, but please, no prescription sunglasses, as we're not allowed to give them to the patients. My name is Rose Chickie. I'm a volunteer here. I've been since we opened the place four years ago. And uh, I'm sorting clothes, as you can see right now. And we have to keep track of every piece of article that comes in here. So, Dorothy, this is another volunteer, Dorothy Magoo. She helps us out here at the uh, clothing mart. We have all kinds of items for women and men, everything that men can use, from socks on up, underwear, socks, pajamas, everything that they can eat, right down to handkerchiefs, the same way with women, even jewelry, and we have hats, and we have winter clothes. Anything and everything that they can use, we have here. Hello, I'm Maria Litorek at Mayview State Hospital. I direct the work activity centers, one of which is the Mayview Greenhouse. This is one of our sites of therapeutic work activity for the patients. The uh, patient clients who work here are all here because their treatment teams feel that they would be able to achieve their goals by taking a position here at the greenhouse. Uh, the patients are all paid, they are voluntary, and on the whole, they really like working here. Uh, it's very, very therapeutic to work with a small seedling, a small plant, and then see it develop into a large plant, a colorful plant that the public comes to buy, and it's a product that people pay to uh, purchase. But really the emphasis here is on the therapeutic environment for the patients, the opportunity for them to do real work, all kinds of work. If they are not very strong physically, they can do certain tasks. If they have good hand-eye coordination, for example, they can do transplanting. The main idea, however, is that the patient feels better about himself by being able to take part in this environment. Not only do we use the greenhouse for paid work, but also as a new uh, pre-vocational assessment site. 
as far as the patients are concerned, it's the site for a fun thing, a leisure activity. But for my department, it's the site to assess to see whether or not the patient is ready for a paid work assignment, if they would benefit from it. Uh, do they have the simple basic skills to follow directions, for example? Um, if they have some of these or if we can work with them, we do to try to get them up to the level that they could work here. A work activity center such as this um, really works with the clients in trying to get them to attain the simple everyday things that you and I do naturally. You have to be at work on time. You have to be able to get along with your other workers, your peers. You have to follow directions. Even if you don't like the person, you have to be able to do as you are told. And in doing these things, you really ready yourself to be on the way as sort of a stepping stone or a bridge to leave the institution, uh, to be able to rejoin the others in the community. We really enjoy having the volunteers here because they are our link to the community. And it's, it's true for the patients also. Um, as they work here, as they start here, they start to feel much better about themselves and are on the way to leaving. Thank you. Hi, my name is Denny Palm, supervisor of the Greenhouse at Mayview State Hospital. I'd like to take a few of your moments and uh, let you know a little bit about our program here at the hospital, starting from outside here. Uh, we compost our soil here and start everything from seedlings on the inside from seed, transplant them and sell them to you, the general public. Uh, we're open year-round here at Mayview State Hospital from 1 till 3.30 in the afternoons. Uh, we're closed on weekends and holidays. Everything that we sell here is sold to the general public. We do have volunteers here working at the, at the greenhouse from time to time, but we sure could use some more help from the outside community. Hello, I'm Barbara Schreiber, and I'm one of the horticultural therapists here at Mayview State Hospital. And uh, the patients in my groups have been putting in a garden, which is to my right, and we've put in some tomato plants, some peppers, and some eggplants, and a couple of strawberry plants. And this is something that some of them have taken a great interest in. Some are even coming to the greenhouse to see how their plants are growing in the little plant cells in, in the greenhouse itself. And some of them need a little bit more prompting to, do, uh, to put in the garden. But it's been a real experience for the patients and for me, too. Hi, I'm Chuck Zaney. I run the uh, VAS uh, wood shop down here. And to start with, this is our coffee area. And we do a lot of interacting here at the coffee area. This is the only place in the shop that the patients are allowed to smoke. They can stop and take a break anytime they want. There's coffee uh, and whatnot here for them to eat and drink. Uh, right here we have two of our volunteers that come in regularly. Uh, Del Lesnut and Bill Flake. And this is where we do a lot of interacting. Uh, the patients enjoy talking to them uh, as much as they do working with them. Uh, much of the work that we do with the patients is one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. We have to set, uh, we help them assemble it. We uh, hold it while they're sawing or uh, sanding or nailing, nailing uh, primarily. And uh, this is a bird feeder, and you can see it's partially assembled. And uh, wherever they work until the time has expired, then they take these parts and put them in their storage boxes over there, and then they come back the next time and pick up where they left off. Uh, the finished products are then sold through the volunteer services, and they realize the money from the sale of it, or they can sell it to anybody they wish, and this gives them the money for cigarettes or whatever they want to spend. Uh, it's their money to keep. It's their work and their product. And here is one of the child's toys that, uh, they put up for sale. And uh, as you see, that's a nice toy for a three-year-old child. Here's a letter holder, plant stand. 
And this is a horse that's uh, been cut out by Dell most of the time, and they get the job of finally assembling it and putting it together. Also, among the volunteers, it's not just limited to men. We have, uh, we have had several female patients, and uh, they are very skillful, too, and they, uh, they enjoy working with the wood. Now, over in this area is where they do the staining and the varnishing uh, after it's been sanded and assembled over on the other table where they do the staining and the varnishing here. And this is a uh, triple planter. And you see they do do a pretty fine job of finishing. I don't know whether you get the color on that, but that's a pretty nice looking unit. That's a single planter there. And this seems to be a very popular item uh, with them. I get, and this is some of the material that they use, min wax, and uh, they do use the, uh, they have availability of the best finishing products that are on the market. So uh, anything here is uh, made good and it, and it looks good when it leaves here. There's a cup holder, you see. This is as fine a table saw as you can buy, and you see we have the guide for it and uh, with the rail on it and intricate adjustments for it. We can rip our wood to any width that we want up to 13 inches or down to a half an inch. Uh, the blades adjust on it. The blade will adjust up in the air and down. So we can cut grooves like for the slot for bird feeders to put the glass down in, lay it on there and cut it and they're all the same. And that's an excellent machine there. And these are two drills that we use. And here we have a small bit in there now, but these are adjustable and we can drill anything from a one inch hole. We have bits for one inch hole on down to any size we want. And there are two of them, but we primarily are using this one now. Okay, this is a band saw that we cut out a lot of the little fancy things that we do. Uh, it's a real good piece of equipment. And in the background there we have sanders and other jigsaws and pieces of equipment that we use. One thing down here that we don't do is let the patients run the equipment for safety purposes. And that's why we need the volunteers and have to help out because we do have a lot of cutting. We have a, a surface planer and it takes down the thickness of the wood. We use a lot of secondhand wood to make it look like new down here. This is the area that we uh, store the parts of the uh, units that the patients make and we cut them out on the tools that you saw prior to this on the saws and the sanders and so forth and over here if you'll notice we have we try to cut the volunteers uh, job here is to cut these uh, units out for the patient so they can sand them and put them together and here we have the wishing wells bird feeders uh, tall plant stands, uh, turtles here, magazine stands, small trucks up here. And when a patient decides, he comes in and he looks and sees what he decides he'd like to make. Okay, uh, we're outside the wood shop right now and this is uh, my supervisor, John Pinchotti. And anytime I have to order anything, I have to go through this gentleman here. My name is Dolly Bates and I'm an LPN here at the GRIP program at Mayview. And these girls are our volunteers. They come every two weeks. Then we, I'm Kay Mamula and I have been volunteering at Mayview since 1961. I'm Sally DeWeese. And I've been coming here since 1955. That makes it 31 years from I'm Helene Gerber. I've been volunteering since 1958, 18 years. 28 years. 28 years. Oh, yeah, excuse me. 28 years. Sorry. Yes, what we do is we go on the wards and we, I play the piano and we all three sing and Helene and Kay dance with the patients if they want to be danced with and we try to do the songs that people know and if we don't know them, we try to do those too. And it's fun. The only time you owe me is when we're dancing. I don't know why I love you like I do. I don't know why I love you. Hey, give me your answer to I'm amazing. All for the love of you. Sorry, I'm
Okay, I'm Jerry Garber. I'm the supervisor of the uh, GRIT program, and GRIT stands for Geriatric Rehabilitation Interaction Therapies. Currently in the area, we have 30 patients, and they're involved in many programs. This is Betty Siebold. She is the uh, charge nurse here on duty today. Hi, we have many patients in the 60 and over, and we have many kinds of groups that they participate in. Uh, we take them uh, on the grounds. We have medication groups. We have uh, remotivation groups. We just have all kinds of fun things that we do for them. And this is um, Marie, Baina. Marie Baina. She's our <laughs> top aide here. <laughs> I'm Marie Baina. I just see to the patient's needs, whatever they need, we help out, we help the nurse, whatever, whatever they needs done, we do here. There are three reasons uh, for welcoming volunteers and the community to, the to hospitals like ours. The first one is that the hospital belongs to the taxpayer, and these need to assure themselves of the fact that our patients or whoever is brought to a hospital for treatment receives good care. A hospital that welcomes volunteers has nothing to fear because a volunteer does not have to say it's good. But we would hope that that would make an impression on, on in everyone. Secondly, our patients have been rejected so often. Haven't you been in the community and seen somebody walk stiltedly and haven't you then thought, please don't let him talk to me? Or if you said hello, that person never lets you go. That's because they need somebody just like the rest of us. If we were sick and we were kept clean, fed, and walked around the block, we still would not be well. We're well when we have friends to whom we can talk, to whom we can, with whom we can share our sorrows and our joys. And our patients love to think that the community doesn't think them altogether crazy, that there's something loving. And a volunteer can address themselves to that which is good because they really don't know what's wrong with these patients. That's the second reason. The third is the reputation of a mental hospital is even in this modern time a snake pit. And yet that's not the case at all. And it's the volunteers who are the liaison between the community and the hospital who will take into the community the message that this is a tremendously good hospital and they're really caring for these patients. Every bit as good as any general hospital. And this is the reason also that we invite the community to come to our orientations, not necessarily to volunteer. That doesn't obligate them at all. We'd like them to see that Mayview State Hospital, Woodville, and many of the other hospitals in the Commonwealth are doing a service to people which are their community friends. And uh, we welcome them. Thank you. You're watching Upper St. Clair Cable 7.